Edelweiss and CNBC TV 18 present Change India Season 3. The work begins now. Hello, welcome to the latest episode of Change India. Last week, we touched upon Prime Minister Modi's Jandan Yojana and its success at dealing with financial untouchability. In today's episode, the spotlight is on Make in India, which is Narendra Modi's ambitious vision to transform India into a global manufacturing leader. Let's take a look. In an environment where the global manufacturing landscape is evolving at a rapid pace, the Make in India initiative has come at just the right time. In a nutshell, Make in India is an ambitious campaign launched by the Narendra Modi government with an aim of making India a global manufacturing hub. If implemented successfully, it will bring about double-digit growth in India's manufacturing sector and will also facilitate investments and create many jobs for India's rising labour force. Let's take a look at the current scenario and also some of the factors that will facilitate India to become an attractive investment destination. See, India is a country which has got a growth trajectory in terms of GDP for the next 25 years. It's a country of young people with good demographics and it also has a manufacturing base. Now it needs a considerable scale up. It also has a skilled labor requirement for which various initiatives are being taken. So it makes a very good attractive investment destination for manufacturing. Manufacturing in India cannot grow at very high rates unless exports don't grow in real terms. Exports must grow in real terms at 25 to 30 percent for manufacturing to grow at 15 to 16 percent. That's essential for India. So let's not say that there is domestic, there is export. We need to just manufacture both for domestic and for exports. The Indian manufacturing sector is witnessing a defining phase in terms of growth and development. The government's initiatives to support manufacturers are anticipated to facilitate investments and to boost the GDP as well as the industry. Good manufacturers from the world can partner with Indian manufacturers. What is required, we required is R&D or technology. What we have got is good raw material, manpower and also capital. Government has identified few sectors like dairy or a packaging machines in where we have got the competence and also a reasonable local market and encourage these sectors to increase production by encouraging the entrepreneur. Business leaders seem to be optimistic of the enormous potential of the nation's manufacturing sector. With the global economic scenario improving, the Make in India initiative is expected to drive economic growth in the upcoming years. Well, so far value for money and good quality have been the key concern areas for leading companies in India like Amul. But with the Make in India initiative making the manufacturing sector its key focus area, the government is encouraging businesses to build themselves up for the growth of their profit and the economy. Manufacturing performance has started looking up in many areas. With the government's support, processes are being upgraded. In this dynamic industry, transparency at all levels is crucial for a successful implementation of any policy. Basically, I think we have good intentions now for the government to digitize a lot of our processes, the Digital India Initiative, so that various approvals are happening more transparent. To reduce the amount of various statutory approvals, to self-authorization. So I think we are on the right track in terms of intent. And now we have to implement it on the ground. So I do believe we are on the path of overcoming these challenges in a democratic manner. The Indian dairy sector is a classic example of an industry that has had great potential since decades. Stable policies and innovative export strategy targeting milk deficit countries could make India seize a significant share of the global manufacturing pie. If we have got a stable policy and we encourage and we export our dairy products to all these milk deficit countries, India can become dairy to the world. 
In the current scenario, the long-term prospects for the Indian manufacturing sector seem promising. The key is to identify the core strength and the potential sectors. On the other side of this break, we'll take a look at the business of the aviation sector in India. How will it progress and how can it benefit from the Make in India initiative? We'll find out after this short break. Edelweiss and CNBC TV 18 present Change India Season 3. The work begins now. Welcome back. Now, the aviation sector has been playing a pivotal role in the growth of the Indian economy. While some players have flourished in this sector, others have had to shut shop and exit from it. But there is one airline company that is growing in a big way for their passengers and is also expanding their business exponentially. How can the Make in India initiative benefit them and what has their strategy been so far? Let's find out. For every rupee you put into aviation, you should get a 12x return. Part of it direct, part of it indirect. Uh, so, you know, direct would be the normal, you know, factors in terms of, um, you know, uh, trade, economies, you know, any kind of productivity that is improved by aviation being there. Indirect would be tourism, would be, you know, anything beyond that, whether it's manufacturing sector. All of them would have a significant uh, uh, benefit with having aviation grow. I, I think, um, look, aviation is a sector you have to, you have to invest in. From my perspective, I don't see it being any different, any different at all from the internet from about 10 years ago or 12 years ago. It's a necessity today. I can't imagine people taking, you know, travels and can't imagine people driving by road for eight hours to get to a meeting and come back. Fly there in 40 minutes, come back, you know, and then have the rest of your day to do something else. And I think India definitely has room for more uh, air carriers to come into India and grow that market. Then, next step would be you look at the routes and the network and, you know, the destinations that you can fly to. But I, I think the framework's been built, you know, in a very progressive manner where all of these aspects have been taken, taken into account and, you know, they're working very closely with each other, I believe. And, um, you know, as old saying goes, you know, when the roads are built, you know, the people will come. In the same ways, I think when the infrastructure is there, people will come, whether it's Singapore, whether it's any other, any other country that wants to come and, you know, help this market grow, I think the opportunity will be there. Industries that leverage India's main assets of availability of labor force and raw materials are sure to prosper in the long run. We've taken the challenge given by the Prime Minister that India must radically improve its position. We've worked very closely across ministries. We've uh, done a lot of business process re-engineering, we've brought everything online, we've done away with human intervention in a large number of cases, we are converging with other departments and we are spreading this revolution to the states. Now the Make in India campaign has generated an overwhelming response both from domestic as well as global manufacturers and investors. However, given the obstacles in India, can this initiative benefit entrepreneurs and new businesses? Let's find out. The hardships of doing business is not just for the foreign companies who come to India. There are equally or more hardships for the Indian companies who are invested in India, including the SMEs and the MSMEs. So I think once this ease of doing business improves, the taxation uh, between states and central is better understood. The harassment of various statutory agencies is reduced by the fact that everything is digitized and it's more transparent in approvals. I have a great hope that this Made of India campaign, we are inherently, latently, very well suited for this. To make a mark on the global value chain, the manufacturers need to cater to the domestic market as well as export to the rest of the world. The manufacturing sector still faces the brunt of some of the factors which limit India's growth. EBIS is already fully functional as far as uh, the Department of Industrial Policy is concerned. You can get industrial license and industrial entrepreneur uh, uh, memorandum uh, filing within 20 uh, four hours, 24 into 7. You see where India is and you, you know, it's positioned right in between all of these superpowers which have done a phenomenal job. China has done a fantastic job when it comes to, you know, the manufacturing sector. And I think make in India probably has to, for us, spend a lot more efforts in the services industry. <laughs> The current political and economic environment in the nation seems to be very favorable for the manufacturing sector. 
there is immense scope to tap in on strengths like surplus labor, ample raw materials and a large base of entrepreneurs. We are world largest producer of milk and milk products of food items but still most of the machinery whether packaging or processing is imported from Europe and now some of the machinery is also for especially for packaging is being made at China. Why not India? We are user, we consume that machine and around us demand is in whether it's uh, South Africa or Africa or Southeast countries or Middle East, demand is there. But again we are dependent on expensive machinery from Europe. We got skilled manpower. So why not we should encourage and manufacturing food processing and dairy machinery and packaging machine in India and not only meet the local requirement but requirement of all the surrounding countries and the Africa. We got skill manpower, we got competence. So, but what we have to see how to ensure that whatever government policy are there, it has to be consistent and stable and fortunately we have got now, we have got stable political environment, stable economical environment. So this is the right time to nurture this, make an in India thing. Infrastructure is the backbone of an economy. In order to gain investor confidence and draw higher FDI, India needs to focus on developing an exports-oriented infrastructure. Infrastructure covers also the competitors in manufacturing. Because a lot of the manufacturing cost is in the logistics of how you get in raw materials, how quickly you get in from the ports, how you don't pay demerages, and how quickly you export them also, or all move them within India. Otherwise, for example, we make uh, large uh, turbines and generators for the power plant. The transportation cycle inland takes months because of the infrastructure bottlenecks. Competitiveness, apart from skilled labor, low cost of interest, good quality machines, skilled manpower, MS, ME, SME, the infrastructure is also very important. With the Make in India initiative, the revival of the manufacturing sector can be witnessed. However, apart from catering to the domestic market, it is now time for India to expand into a global manufacturing hub. The Make in India campaign has definitely struck a chord with the global community. However, the need of the hour is to adopt a well-planned and structured approach. We'll find out much more after this short break. Edelweiss and CNBC TV 18 present Change India Season 3. The work begins now. Welcome back. With an aim to attract manufacturing sector investment, the Make in India campaign can make India a part of a global value chain. While the thought is commendable, turning that into reality might not be so simple. Let's get an insight into some of the hindrances that could be faced. People come over here for India is a consumption market. Okay, we don't mind. So foreigners coming here and producing for consumption. But foreigners also nowadays, foreign industrial houses feel that Indian labor being the cheapest and India has got the technology, people are very, very serious to work and young talented folks which are coming from the schools and colleges, they are, they are definitely meaning their business, they know how to work, etc. All these plus points all, all over the world, uh, manufacturers and all over the world the financial sector is taking the advantage. Apart from that, all, all over the world the cost is going high and high. India it is not going that much. Apart from few infrastructure problems like power uh, and uh, transport etc. India is the best place to produce the goods and sell over here and take it back to, for their destination also. So it seems that uh, making India will get successful. But for some inertia is uh, there, some time is there. So, every effort, every force, there is the inertia and then it starts moving. Accordingly, 8-10 months have already been over and now you, see, you have seen that things are moving. The new, new government policy is very, very practical and with this, I think Make in India will make a very good success. When all these auto manufacturers came into India, uh, look at Suzuki, uh, look at uh, Hyundai, look at Toyota, look at Honda, all of them came into India looking at the domestic market. 
And India has today become the center for compact car manufacturing. They all look at the domestic market, but they all manufacture for the export markets as well. I mean, look at Hyundai. 48% of its production goes to 123 countries of the world, across the world. Uh, you know, what is the share of India in the global markets? It's just 1.7% of the global markets. Mm -hmm. Uh, why should we not expand our share in the global export market? India has been very much import dependent. You see electronics, right? Small, small TVs and mobile phones. We, we can't produce here, we get imported. But we have got all the technologies. We, our engineers work, our engineers work in Intel, develop CPU, and they cannot produce over here. So that is the challenge that we, we should uh, reduce our import content and we should contribute to the export. We have got the people and that is our main strength. We have got the talented for talented force. That is our main strength. So those we can export and by exporting India can earn. Today we are losing on import side. Superior R&D, innovation and introduction of new products and services should soon form the core of the Indian manufacturing sector. A strong base of skilled personnel would drive the development of the overall sector. I think this will be a great trend to see manufacturing really rejuvenate not only the employability but the employability of very highly capable engineers so that the creative force of technology upgradation, innovation, like what is happening in the new economy by young, smart people coming from good colleges can also get further reinforced in manufacturing. However, the road ahead does have its challenges. The key is to address fierce competitiveness in cost and non-cost areas, to gain investor confidence and to bring about ease of conducting business in India. There was a time when, maybe it still is, when you say German products, when they said made in Germany, it carried tremendous weight. People felt that anything that is... Uh, German had to be great quality. It can't be. Like China got the name the other way around. That if it's Chinese and people talk of it like Chinese Malay, that kind of a thing. So, you know, Germany had that edge over the world that technologically, in every quality respects, a German product would be something that you can depend on. And we have in India such companies. We have Tata's which do that. As I said, we have Amul, Vico. And if that can be then taken down the the, the, it can percolate down. Everybody has that same pride that I am doing it not just to make money, but I am doing it because the Make in India label should carry some weight. It will carry some weight after some time. It won't start happening immediately. It will have to be experienced by the world that yes, if you buy a Make in India product, you are assured of quality. With the Make in India campaign, it's time to define Brand India, a brand that stands for quality and excellence in manufacturing. This perception would not only aid the foreign market to place their trust in India, but also make the nation an attractive investment destination. Undoubtedly, it is now a time of great hope and expectation for India, and we definitely have the advantage of a pro-industry government. The Make in India initiative has also set things off on a good start by unleashing the potential of the manufacturing sector in India. In the coming years, thrust on technology, product development and improvement in infrastructure will be pivotal on the journey of turning Make in India into a reality. Well, as you can see, it's an audaciously ambitious vision that Prime Minister Modi has outlined. But the Make in India campaign does hold the potential to drive India's economic growth in the coming decades. Next week, we'll be focusing on Swachh Bharat Abhiyan, how it's been initiated and what it seeks to achieve. Until then, keep watching CNBC TV 18. Edelweiss and CNBC TV 18 present Change India Season 3. The work begins now.